It's the people. Isn't the first rule of business give the people what they want? <laughs> that's a good. Is it? I, no, I don't know if it is. Actually, I think that's just a sentence that's put together um, <laughs> by people who give. <laughs> well, well, there's loads of these things, isn't stuff. it? There's loads of these things. Yeah. Like, what would be another one? Is that look after yourself? Like, you know what I mean? Charity begins at home. Yeah, all these makes th- sense. It doesn't mean it's ethically it, right. Yeah, it, it applied to every single situation. So yeah. people use these things as some way to justify how they're feeling, an emotion that they've actually got, yeah. or, or a course of action that they've taken, and then these little fucking false false truths become like their guiding light. Yeah. You're not listening. I am. That yeah that you do, I know you're not listening. That's pushing the conversation on when I can't contribute. It's, just, okay. it's, a, it's a tactic. It's a tactic. No, you're right, though. Um, this is the Long Ball Street podcast. Back again. It's just me and you this time. Yeah. Which has been quite, you know, I miss this. Yeah, we did, it's I mean, nice, it's all right yeah. having James. Pro, pro footballers on there and James. Ju- Jubes was good, actually. Jubes was fantastic. I fucking people, love So people talked about the podcast and people like cracking up. We have mates texting me, talking about the shower scene and talking about the Willy, mm. Willy stories and, and how awkward it was going into that conversation because we knew what we wanted to get to, but how do you go to the point where you had to tell the story about looking at Jubes' Willy when he's sitting like there? I know. It's like, yeah, Jubes, I checked you out and it's like, a, <laughs> it's like the trunk of a giant elephant. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't fucking... Nah, you yeah, can't. Yeah. Stay away from the fence. How, you know have, I mean? how have you been? Don't feed the animals. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. have your hand off. No, I will. Uh, yeah, good, mate. I've... Um, Obviously, we just had had Vades in. Mm. Little girl Babies in. in. Yeah. That was, that was lovely. It she, was lovely. Yeah. She said, she, did you see she did the uh, double double take on James? She did, didn't she? Yeah. She's so very it's like flirty. A, like that. She went, oh, but we, hello, handsome. We weren't sure if it was that, about the handsome thing, or that she wasn't sure why there was a grown baby in the <laughs> Yeah. She's like, hang on a minute. Yeah. Fucking, I'm bigger than him. Why can't I walk yet? <laughs> yeah. He seems to be speaking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be operating a Mac. <laughs> yeah, and people are laughing at him. Editing. Um, <laughs> uh, what's happening with your website? People, I mean, your your website. content, your your YouTube, because people right. keep messaging. Yeah, You've I've asked seen people that. to subscribe. All right, mate. Sorry, I'm just side. you on? I'm on your side always. All right, good. Yeah. Um, well, we. So it's obviously it's a bit about. <laughs> Resource. I mean, it's good. What I wanted is to get a few people to subscribe before we start putting up content. Because yeah. normally, I'm putting up one thing and no one's watching it. You've got over 200, which is not bad. That's just on, on, on ask, asking. Yeah. And if that, you, please, if you're watching it, like subscribe to it now because the content is going to start. We've actually been working on that this morning. Yeah. On the plan because ultimately we've got a bunch of stuff that we do here. You know, like this podcast, like. Um, Talking Balls, mm. Social Club, there's a bunch of things that we do. And we've obviously just had a nice big deal that we've done on behalf of the Ball Street Network yeah. with Ladbrokes. Yeah. There's been a lot of times going into that and a lot of resource has been uh, applied to things that are really important. We've got we've got uh, a new starter who's going to be coming that's going to be working specifically on on the, uh, this channel, this right. new channel, which right. is... Uh, and we've been working out how some of the content's going to go, so really excited. One of them, in particular is going to be um, about building Ball Street, which is going to be, um, I'd hesitate to call it reality TV, um, um, and I'd hate to call it, what did I say? I'd hate to call it reality TV, mm. and I'd hate to call it a soap opera, but it'll be somewhere in the middle of that. Right. It'll just be like, so you'll be on it, we'll all be on it, dropping in, and almost watching us as we're going through this process of building a media company that gives a fuck about fans and that fights for fan issues and surveys Mm. and and lobbies fan issues um, but also harnesses the power of all these different channels and different um, fan media properties working together I haven't seen any of the footage yet but from the filming you've been doing you can tell the kind of vibe you've been going for I'm really curious about seeing what comes out it's kind of It is. It's like that. It's like a behind the scenes, it's like flying the ball kind of thing. Actually, no. It's like a first person. It's like yeah. From your perspective, you know, yeah. you're essentially holding the camera up at that time, so you're placing yeah. it and saying you think. Part of that has just been trying to get a uh, see what some of these things look like. Yeah. Um, and actually, the quality of some of it, it's just not up to scratch. Right. It's almost to kind of get an idea. Yeah. Start to bed in, but it'll be. It's going to have Junior. Uh, he's going to be working on it, so he's going to be filming it mm-hmm. and starting to collate all this right. stuff. I so that's you. that's one element of it. Yeah. Then there'll be other bits which will be um, it'll be more like interviews and meetups with people that are significant in this space. Mm. So it could be 
Akeem from Cheeky Sport, who's actually an entrepreneur who's got a couple of different businesses. Yeah. Um, it could be Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV. Mm. People within our network, also people like Steve Oda Madman, uh, Snapchat, a oh, fucking amazing on Snapchat. Yeah, he um, is. He's so funny. As well as Righty and people like that. So, and, oh, and I, we did get one in the can with Jubes. So there's a few of these meetings where we're just talking about business, which also relates to sport and social. So there's going to be that's going to be some of the stuff, mm. and then there's going to be the building, Ball Street, like weekly documentary style thing. So no, it's going to be sick. So, so subscribe and, and enjoy. It should be good. Absolutely, yeah. The description will be the link will be in the description, and we'll also make it a post one of the comments as well. So looking one even Just one getting of, my water. Sorry, keep going. That's all right. You sure that hasn't been there for a week or so? No, I put this in here this morning. <laughs> all right. What uh, chilled over? Yeah, come on, Adam. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so when I first was introduced to Ball Street, I was I was looking at it and I could I couldn't fathom how because people see Ball Street's audience and they think that that that, that everything is sustained from just say our YouTube channel and whatnot. Yeah. And I think that's going to be fascinating. You'll see the inner workings and what goes on, I guess, and, yeah. and what happens in the business outside of this YouTube stuff. Definitely, because that that's the the Ball Street channel is one tiny part of it. Really, mm. um, it's something we're believing and that we're investing in because. Uh, long term we want to have a great football channel that's actually got a bit more than just the obvious jokes yeah you know that you like we were talking about actually before we started filming this you know you see these things and everyone's doing it. it's like oh great it's uh, fucking Arsene Wenger and fucking Louis van Gaal's head on something some famous scene from a fucking music video it's yeah. like and that's just every single channel's producer we've never done any of that do you know the actual the, 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 what you have to do we've done we've done a little bit but you, the, 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 it, it takes quite it's quite difficult to not fall into that trap of doing it because mm. you know it people watch it you know it'll get shared and you know it'll get Bull Street's name attached out there but you, you have to stop yourself because there is no point in just adding to the the, the pool to the yeah. mire of fucking yeah. things that are just thieving just from people's time. Yeah. But what I can't say is that people kind of really fucking watch that stuff. I, I mean, I don't know how you just kind of constantly find that funny when it's just the same joke. Personally, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, all right, okay, fuck it. I mean, you know what's going to happen, don't you? Mm. Like, it's just like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. But but we, I mean, I, actually, I don't think we have uh, gone in for that. Like, we're not. We've never been doing this just for the views. No. It, it's not about that. It's no, no. about the substance. Yeah. And, and personally, and, and and not that I sit here complimenting you loads on stuff because no one wants to watch that, do they? Well, um, so, no, let's try it. Uh, you, you look, <laughs> your hair looks great. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> uh, is it a problem, right, out there? Anyone who, who... Adam, I don't know if you think this is an issue, but before we go on camera, that like, I do my hair. I was in the toilet and I came out and he's in there, like, against the mirror, kind of perfecting it. Nothing wrong with that. Thank you very much. This is a young 22-year-old metrosexual. <laughs> uh, no, you're right, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but seriously, like, talking balls yeah. is fucking... That is... Um, it's an expression of our personalities, of, mm. of our values really come out in that. Um, it's irreverent, and it, but it's, it's fucking original and unique. Mm. I think it's, it was a good thing. It, it kind of helps supplement the, the social club as well, and, and, and kind of uh, those two things together are, are different, but offer uh, perhaps something that isn't being done elsewhere. I hope, mm. I hope so. I mean, that's the, that's the aim, and trying to improve that constantly is difficult. Of course. Not because it's brilliant. A lot of it's work goes into that. Yeah, area. it does. It takes a lot of work each week. And, and, and uh, But there's a lot of people that go for something that's um, scalable content that's very cheap and easy to do, mm. like having a guy that sits at home and you send him a head and a video and say, all right, make Britney Spears fucking Arsene Wenger. Yeah. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Well, like, yeah, like I there's mean, that. From, and the views that you get from that mm. and how easy it is to kind of do that. It is frustrating. You can understand why people do it, but that, that's not what we're trying to do. No, and, and I think... Um, I think what should be, it should be said is that when you look at it, when we're talking balls, it looks like it's me. It looks like I'm sitting there and 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 I'm in control of that product. And to a certain extent, I am. But there's there's three of us that, that yeah. goes into that, and the re resource that takes is significant. And yeah. it shouldn't be. It has to be recognised and accepted that doing that for fifteen thousand views is every week. And sometimes you think, you know, you think oh, there's some stuff that's flying around the internet that's getting huge audiences uh, with half the work that's going into it and it can be frustrating, yeah. but it's about sticking to your what you believe is right kind of yeah. content in a world where things are just easily thrown away. Yeah. Um, so 
a lot of a lot of commotion around this tackle, this this, this tackle, Neil Taylor tackle on Seamus Seamus or Seamus in it, Seamus Coleman. Yeah. Seamus. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Seamus. Seamus. Sometimes, sometimes they like to be called Seamus. Sometimes they Some, like to be called Seamus. Seamus. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just oh, casting ju- oh, casting no. judgments because I mess mess yeah. up with one word. Like I've done that before. Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, he's copying my trainers. And yeah, he walks in with a pair of uh, old Reebok classics, not old Reebok classics. like reworking of a, a copy, classic the, trainer. The copying these. Good sheets. They are good shoes. So he does make a point. He did get them outside out of JD Sports, and there are. You know, it's not like they're you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to make them yourself or something like that. Yeah, it's not like you have to find but some sort of bespoke. Is it okay, though? Because he's wearing an Adidas T-shirt. I, is that all right? Well, I always find that a bit... Like, I can't... I couldn't wear... Well, you couldn't wear both. An Adidas, like, sweater with these. It wouldn't feel right. Why not? It's like, wearing, just it's like wearing. Much. It's like wearing brown shoes. Brown shoes. It's, it's, it's like it's like wearing brown shoes and denim jeans. While we're here, can, can you just show them the t-shirt and to go and the? Because I just want to know if people think it's all right. Let's have almost a vote. Is it okay? It's not about do we like Adam or not because we love Adam. I like Adam. But it's, are you allowed? Because in my head, I can't do this. I can't wear these trainers. Yeah, come over here, Ed. Right, <laughs> and then then just to show them the t-shirt ads. Sainsbury's girl have a good look at him <laughs> uh, uh, what you, say, you don't double brand is what you're saying yeah he just feels like he's that allowed no, there's not double brand Reebok trainers and Adidas that's two brands yeah. double oh yes. what you can't wear two brands not, not one not that, uh, two not ones that are that are, that are both sort of like sneaker brands that should be like a Reebok Classics T, or those should be like Shell Toes or Superstars or Stan Smiths or something. That's what I. That's what I feel. A guy called Mark Ellington who knows about this stuff. Hopefully, he will let us know the answer. Yeah. Uh, anyway, where were we? He's one of uh, the people that comment. Mark Ellington. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Part of the crew. Yeah. Seamus Coleman obviously legs smashed to bits in the game uh, between Wales and and Northern I- uh, Republic Island. Yeah. And I just, I kind of, the f- furore and, and fallout of it got, kind of, it wound me up again. Because, like, bad tackle, it was a horrendous tackle, made no mistake. These and sort of tackles. Leg, that's, I mean, like, that his leg was, was terrible to watch. It was. Horrible and, uh, do you know what? Watch. I, I, haven't, I haven't watched it back. I haven't watched it, but I haven't sought it out on the internet. What, what, do you, what do you think of people, before we get into this, uh, people that share things like that did you know what the I, broken leg break well so I saw that we had put out a tweet or Instagram or whatever um, where it was on it and for a second I was like fuck man I, I'm not sure yeah, yeah I, I, there's the something about people want to see it right and mm-hmm. you kind of do want to see what's happened but when you you just kind of it's such a horrible thing that mm. it's a little bit like rubbernecking at a scene of an accident. Yeah, you know? but it's also human nature. I mm. think. Um, I think what the I'm sentiment not sure there's of the, the right answer. Yeah, the sentiment of the Bull Street tweet in Adam's defence. <laughs> Who's Adam doing? <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was more Shane Long's reaction because he cradled him, didn't he? He yeah. went and hugged Shane as Coleman whilst he was getting treatment. Yeah, that's quite nice. And that's just like, look, this is how fucked up his leg is. Yeah, and that's that's why okay. that one banged. That was a bang up. That was a certified bang up. I think that's why I, uh, I I remember looking at it now because it was a Shane Long angle, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is quite nice. Yeah. It's touching. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, so so the, the kind of f- the fallout and, and question and, and and the questions towards Coleman after the game, not Coleman who injured his leg, uh, the Wales manager, and he was forced to say or felt obligated to say that Neil Taylor isn't one of these players you know he's not that kind of player right but then there aren't that many kind I can think of one person who went out to break someone's leg and that was Roy Keane when he went out and got Hangerland I mean Hangerland no Harland Alfie Inga Harland yeah and they had beef going back ages yeah I think Harland sort of leant over him more yeah didn't he? Shouted at him whilst Roy Keane had just done his ACL. Yeah, and he was out for a year, and, and Roy Keane got the retribution he felt he deserved. Mm. Um, so there's rarely, rarely players like that, and Roy Keane's the only one that stands out. And obviously, Neil Taylor and any footballer isn't that kind of player, I don't think. Yeah. I just wondered, um, you know, we talked about, we're told that it's a man's game, it's a physical Ooh. game, and sometimes these things. What does it mean, that kind of player? Like, just nasty. He thinks nasty who goes out to hurt people, who's a kind of enforcer type player who's rather is to scare do, the opposition. I don't, but I don't think that anybody. Because there's some semblance of um, brotherhood with 
professional athletes mm. and any of them will tell you that being out injured it's the worst it's your livelihood it comes up often doesn't it yeah it's your livelihood a few footballers have spoke about how it uh, lights the fuse of depression and, and mental illnesses we've we've had that chat with a few of them haven't we McKenzie, yeah, yeah uh, on the pod it's just having the separation from the, the main squad yeah so I, I don't think that any athlete actually really apart from Mike Tyson biting Evander Holyfield's ear but, yeah. but where they go out to try and stop the other person's livelihood yeah. which when after an injury has happened and we sit there going he's going to look how bad it is it's going to be out for he's going to be out for a year or whatever his career might be over when you then look at it from there then the tackle looks really bad it looks even worse and then the kind of almost you start to look at the intent mm. and, and I think it's I'm not sure that what's the guy that did the tackle Neil Taylor I'm not sure that Neil Taylor will have gone into that tackle thinking I want to jeopardise this guy's career mm. I would think that it's, you, people don't really do that I actually think that it's more like in that moment the ball's fizzing around you're in what's a derby game it's a World Cup qualifier you're, is it a World Cup qualifier or yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> so there's a lot at stake and your job is to fuck it and the crowd especially Irish crowd you, you know like, they want you to get stuck in mm. so you're kind of you're going into tackles Look, the, the only crime that you can really have as a player is to not be fully committed yeah. teams are complimented players are complimented Wells for how, yeah Wales were in the Euros yeah. for, for how competitive and how they're fucking flying around the ball and they're into the tackle and you've got to you know you ask you any player you've got to let the, your opponent man to man you've got to beat your man you've got to win your personal battles yeah. so I'm sure but the game's so fast the game's yeah. so quick yeah that it's, you've got the, the margins for error are very very slight you know what I mean you've or, got seconds to react in, in milliseconds actually and this was at a spell of the game when uh, Bow just should have been sent off for a really bad challenge about a minute before yeah. tackles were flying in the, yeah. it was at that point you can get them in games sometimes not every game but yeah. you know there's a time where it's almost like a powder keg moment where yeah. everyone's flying in there might have been a, ch- a hard challenge yeah. but a fair one and that yeah. winds up a number of the team and then because they're losing their heads somewhat yeah. they, they make a rash challenge or they react in a way they wouldn't normally have done that doesn't make them a nasty player that no. makes them human yeah and, and, and let's look at the because um, we spoke a bit about different sports before and when so tempers can flare in all sports yeah it it's flares in nature. baseball it flares in cricket yeah. it flares in American football Golf. And it flares in golf, and these are sports that aren't as dynamic as as football. Yeah. Because these are sports where it's a play, yeah. and then it stops, and then it's a play, and then it stops, and you wait for the bowler to get back, and then he runs up and bowls it. And tempers flare in those situations. Yeah. So in one where the game moves very quick, and if it doesn't go out of play, it keeps moving. You've got it's primed for end to end one thing happening and kind of almost the the momentum and the the tension to kind of uh, to, to to lift you know that's why you get these games where you just know it's going off and it's seconds from going off you know and that's why the referees obviously very important yeah but in football it's primed for this kind of thing to happen but I think it's difficult to sit there and go this guy's gone out there and he's meant to do it is it reckless yeah it was a reckless tackle Mm. Um, but I think that there's there's lots of bad tackles that go on but they don't necessarily result in that because for an injury like that to happen it needs a couple of other things yeah. to be going on. Mm. The, the guy's leg needs to be in the right place. He Stunts needs to be, to be in the... following through. Yeah. yeah, the foot. There's physics going on, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times when people get injured, it's because they've got a foot that's trapped in the turf, or the pressure's on that standing leg when then the the impact happens. Mm. Because if a, a lot of the time, if it's you know, it, it's like you can get hit in boxing, and if you're anchored and your weight's in the wrong position, that'll catch, or you're walking onto it by the laws of physics that increases the gravity of the shot yeah. whereas if you're actually turn, you know, turning away and cush, uh, the, the impact doesn't have the quite and you see it coming it doesn't yeah. have the quite the same thing yeah, yeah. so I think physics has got to be in the right place to make a rash tackle which happens quite often result in something as bad as that and also we're talking about that challenge. so I feel sorry for both of them 
I've, yeah, don't get me wrong. Coleman has no one. I hope to swear to God, I never have to experience that kind of pain. Yeah, and he's a really good player, and it's an amazing yeah. story from him because Everton picked him up for sixty thousand mm. um, pounds. Uh, God, no, man, maybe ten years ago or so now, and he's turned into one of the, the, the best fullbacks in the in, in the country. So it's a shame that, that this has happened, but it is football, yeah. and um, like we will be talking about the Neil Taylor challenge on Coleman for years. Yeah. Uh, what we won't be talking about is the bow challenge a minute earlier because sure, sure. all of those things weren't in yeah. place for that leg to be broken. Yeah. Um, and I guess the reason why we're talking about it and why I wanted to bring it up is because the, the way the kind of media, and we talk a bit about the media quite a lot on here, but the way the media reacted to this challenge, it's as if, in some instances, Neil Taylor's an, an animal. And, you know, if you look at the way the Irish press have covered it, they're going to be, they're going to want to mirror the the kind of sentiment of the nation, rather than actually thinking it was a bad challenge in a game of football where these things happen every now and then. Unfortunately, mm. yeah, it's tough, man. But I, I mean, look, I, I uh, when I play football, yeah, you tell uh, me about this. You can see on the one more game, like I I hurt Ralph Little. Um, Did you? <laughs> <laughs> there's a Thug Life video online with me. <laughs> no, there isn't. There isn't. Yeah, it, and it was fucking. I mean, I. What was, did you do? Well, I. Actually, do you feel bad about it now? No. Right. What did you do? Well, I had the ball. Right. And and I turned inside. Yeah. But it kind of uh, overplayed. Like not overplayed it, but I'd cut inside, and he was. So I was. I popped up on the right hand side of midfield, mm. carried it, cut inside across there to, to move across the towards the back four, and he was coming across from central midfield, and as he was coming in to tackle me, I kind of went to tackle, and we both. Caught he, well, we, for me it was like, 50, and he actually said to me if it was fair, but everyone was going fucking hell. Like right, right, he was saying, send him. Up. I was on his team. <laughs> he was shouting, send, send him, him off, send him off. Yeah, and um, but it, yeah, it was just one of them things. Um, but you know, I've always um, been quite. You know, you, you where I'm from and the era I was from, you you had to get stuck in. You learned to get maybe, stuck in. Matt, you were that type of player. I probably was that guy for flair, but but for injuries though, a lot of the times it's, it's something innocuous and something nothing. I remember yeah. playing football at uni in Birmingham, and Pete the Meat, who's a Spurs fan, um, Pete the Meat, Pete the Meat, uh, and w- w- one of my besties, and we played and lived together. He's a fucking great footballer, um, and we were playing this drill where you go from one side of the tennis court to the other, and it was only one touch. There were like maybe three or four aside or something like that, yeah. and we'd worked it all the way to the other side and to score and to. To score, you have to just stop with the ball on the baseline of the tennis court yeah. at the other team's baseline. Like there wasn't a goal. That's what you did to to score. And we'd worked it. We've won twos, and we were all like almost giddy because we'd kind of done it. Yeah. And he stopped like that and just fell over. And we were all like laughing at that. Yeah. And then he's not getting up. And we're like, hey, come on. Oh. And then he's just like he's not getting up and the next thing me and him are leaving I'm driving us to the hospital and he never played football again was he that ruptured his knee yeah it was his cruciate um, fucking hell um, so, and, so it, 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 and that was it, it was just nothing so yeah. it's kind of well, just add, because of that happens it doesn't mean the guy's wanting that to happen he's just yeah. trying to fucking have an impact on ads when he game. played with, he, yeah he's, fuck Adam we know uh, was like Adam, cool, Adam in, he's a good player I can tell he can play a bit Starts off, we had a game against Creators FC, which you can watch on our YouTube channel. Go yeah, and check it out. Wall Street YouTube, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he comes in, first minute, Adam rises like a fucking Scores. salmon in the box. Like that bush, beautiful cushion dead right in the corner. I was like, get in, son. Next thing, he touched the ball, turns on the box, cr- manages to cross it in, maybe, I think. And then he's just on the floor, and he's like, Adam's not getting up. And then he's like, like this. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, he's broken his leg or done something. And we went running over, me and Jim. And I was like, "What do you want me to do?" You know, what, what do you want me to what, do? First, I'm right. What I'd like you to do is just like do an incision. Yeah, because uh, he was so far. Like it was the other end of the pitch. Right. So I was just thinking, "How can we get him? What are we going to do?" And so I was like, "Ran, <laughs> I ran all the way through to the." He's like, "I've got to get me an ambulance because he's in." He was like writhing oh, him round. Bless tears. I think Adam. He, I think he shit himself as well. You had him that on. I had it down. Oh, and, then, and, and I ran back through the course. Uh, through the to, through the pitch, went to reception and went. Oh, one of the, one of our lads has busted his knee up. He needs an ambulance. She went. You've got a phone. I was like, what's that? <laughs> what's he saying? I just call an ambulance. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then anyway he, got, he was alright at the end but um, he's got to have an operation in a couple of weeks that's right um, bless him yeah so yeah I mean there are those players out there I don't think Neil Taylor is and no. I think ultimately that the media are perpetuating this story because it's a good story for them right. is it still going on then I don't really kind of yeah yeah I mean it's, it's died down a little bit or anything like died that. down a little bit now um, right. so we've got some pod questions a few good ones yeah uh, Big Pete official he says, I know you're out. And that, by the way, if anyone wants to leave questions on the pod, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Long Ball Street, and leave your comments in the comments below, or the questions in the comments below. Lovely, as we keep saying, the lovely little community there now, and it? It good, is. Good bunch of people. It is a very good bunch of people. One or two. Less. less. <laughs> <laughs> not so nice. One. One. One not so nice. Um, but <laughs> I, I quite enjoy it as well, to be fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, leave it and tweet us, but it's a lot harder to track the questions, so it's best to just go to our YouTube, yeah. subscribe, and then... Yeah. Uh, yeah do, do you know what, if, before you get onto that, yeah. someone had, had made a really good point last week about, uh, and he said, have you thought about taking audio from... Social the, Club. Yeah, from Social Club, one of the Ball Street shows, and putting it on there. Yeah, so there's a great idea. idea. And that is a great I idea. I love people actually when they contribute. Care and fucking yeah, get involved. That's be- that is yeah. nice. Yeah, so, so there's, there's a couple of things we're doing. Um, we're going to find a way to take the audio and put that on a podcast. There's a challenge involved in the quality of the audio and the type of audio we're recording. It's different here. We have a studio mic. and wow. uh, But we we'll, can we'll find a way around it. Um, uh, but what we're also thinking is we don't know whether we just put the same stuff on or whether we get them to do a special mm. little 10 minutes of podcast like a short form we'll, there's, there's, there's ways around it yeah. we can sort something but out. we'll be adding more to it actually so it'd be interesting to let you know now I know you, uh, a lot of you watch on YouTube um, and obviously probably the same amount of people are, are listening on SoundCloud yeah. and the same again on iTunes yeah um, and I guess there's like do you want more because we've got the opportunity to do something special with the social club guys, which is the likes of Paul, Ped, Chris, Robbie, Flav, James, who, you know, that Monday show. Do you want us to do a special little audio piece for that? Yeah. Um, but additionally, we're looking at potentially doing something that looks ahead to the weekend to games. To preview the weekend, yeah. yeah. We kind of look through some fixtures. and Which is probably not going to be me... Um, it's going to be you and James, yeah. right? Which should be quite cool. And that might be audio and then a little bit on here as well. So it's like, do you want that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah. So then we can maybe get this podcast out in the middle of the week, some at the start of the week and then something on the Friday. Yeah, if people want yeah. that much, then we can deliver it. Yeah. I think they do. We'll see. Yeah. Always just we not. don't want to do too much, do we? We don't no, want to don't like, do it for, for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you're busy looking at sort of like... Arsene Wenger's head but on with, a, I think the preview stuff well, yeah, video. Well, the preview st- <laughs> the preview video. stuff we, we, Books we probably should do and if the content's there if people want to watch it then they can it's your choice uh, me and uh, Babyface Assassin yeah. Tiny Ovis yeah. Babyface Assassin Dwarf oh. Brad Pitt yeah Dwarf. all of those things James's yeah. Um, Pete the Meat where, where's that name come from um, self self given I really I I'm pretty sure you've got to have, you've got yeah. to have some proper charisma in order and to give yourself your own Pete nickname and let it stick I know. and then he tried to as well because there were a couple of people there was Scouse Pete right. and he was just to me Pete um, yeah. But he then has been trying to claim that at uni he was known as like Big Pete. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> Big Pete. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, uh, my my brother um, had the gift of the gab, good looking, um, challenged in other ways, mm. but we won't go into that. The, uh, and he, he somehow got the nickname Magic to stick. Magic. I want to be called Magic. Somehow it's stuck and people yeah. called him Magic for years. That's good. I mean, it is good, but the, you, you look like a. It looked like a prick when you said it. You know, uh, Neil, yeah. Neil upstairs, uh, a yeah. new guy that started in, in uh, runs our sales team now. Um, he he's got a name called Goldmine, <laughs> but it's from his from playing poker with his mates. They call him Goldmine because that's what he represents to them. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. I, I didn't think that was where the story was going. Yeah, Goldmine. Good really work. Good. Uh, Big Pete official. He says. <laughs> He's not big Pete. <laughs> he's not that big Pete. I don't think. But it's quite funny. <laughs> he's added official to the end of it. Yeah. Big Pete official. He says, "I know you're out, uh, out, Matt. Talking about Huddersfield. Um, okay. But which Wembley win would have meant more to you this season, the FA Cup final or the playoffs? 
What would you be more going up or winning the FA Cup? Look, things aren't ever easy with me. No. Um, so I'm, it's not as simple as. So, okay. All things being equal, it's the FA Cup. I'm not bothered about being in the Premier League. I don't want it. I've watched, it's already started by people because we're up near the top. People are going, oh, and commenting on us, and they don't know a fucking thing. Yeah. You're getting mentioned in traditional media, and they're talking about us. It's like, fuck off. People are after our managers. I've got people making Jack Reeve, in fact. He was getting. Jack Reeve. I was surprised. I know, we're mates. I'm so not. I love I know. Jack. It's, and you said all these lovely things about him yeah. on the pod, and then and he was now just he's like, here, all right, Matt, we're taking your manager and your fucking coach. Yeah, what the fuck? How'd you like that, Matt? So we've had a. And he's like, I'll bet you, I'll bet you. I'm like, all right, mate. Fuck yeah. okay. so, so we've had a bet, actually, and it's that if. Wagner, if if Wagner's their next manager, mm. then he wins. If he isn't, then I win the bet. And what will happen is his podcast will be dominated by the Long Wall Street and will be branded with the Long Wall Street. And if, <laughs> and if Wagner goes there, then this podcast is, becomes Tottenham Norwich City. So I'm sorry for for, for how long? Uh, for one week. I'm sorry for, for doing that <laughs> to you lot as well. Yeah, I mean, cause Cause, I mean, you should have talked to me about it. I know, but I was confident. <laughs> I was confident and I was, you know what I'm like, if I'm, if I'm back to the corner, I'm like, wow. <laughs> aggressive. Uh, so uh, I went for it. We've but, got to stop making bets uh, on this on this channel. On, uh, on what was your bet? I, I've got to perform oral sex on Sam. If, if What was the reason? <laughs> I, can't I don't oh even God. know why. No, that was if Leicester win the Champions yeah, yeah, League. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Which yeah, is safe, I, but then when you think about what happened last year, is it really safe? No, I, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> he doesn't want that. No one wants that. No. But a man is a well, man, Nick, Nick from West Ham fan bond. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick from West Ham fan TV. He's got to eat. He's got to w- worse than than that. <laughs> He's actually got to become a cannibal. Yeah, he has to eat his dick. No, 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 no. He has, no, he has to eat the whole of Sam. Eat Sam. Yeah, a cannibal. <laughs> but, then, but then no more Sam. So it swings around. It's, about. Yeah, exactly. It swings around. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So I, I don't want to be in the Premier League. I don't like people. Huddersfield Town's my fucking little yeah. thing that's always been mine. Yeah. I don't want it to be dirtied by people going, oh, look at you, you're shit, and commenting on you. And yeah. I just don't want to be, I don't want all of a sudden players to be mercenaries that, you know what I mean? I, I like it's it like, how it is. It's like underground music that goes mainstream. Exactly. Mm. I, I, I like being a challenger. I don't like being being that team so I don't want to do that and I actually had a Man City fan talking to me on the comments last week yeah. and he was like fucking and I, I can't remember what he was saying but basically I said look mate I'll be dead honest with you I don't want to ever be Man City yeah. do you know what I mean keep your money keep your pep you fucking we yeah. might sign Messi or whatever it is I'm not interested I'm happy with how we are so I definitely choose the FA Cup oh, unless unless in both of those if say we got to both fight we got yeah. to play a final and we were playing Leeds yeah. in the playoffs I can't. I can't have that. You can't lose. I can't lose to Leeds in that game. No, I'd rather lose the fact. I don't want to lose to Leeds in the playoff final. So right. I, I would take that over anything because I don't want them to have that over me. Here's another question then. Just a, 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 I hate football. It's making me. Feel, I, I'm not, I feel uncomfortable at the moment with the pressure. As an aside to that kind go of additional on. question, there is: Would you take a win in one and a loss in the other, or would you go in and let the chips fall where they may? And so I'm going into both of those games. No. You've beat them twice this week season already. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's some, it's just clear that we're going to end up playing fucking lead in the playoff final. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, when I, when uh, when Vader was due for near Christmas, yeah, and it was you could just, uh, it's going to be Christmas Day, yeah, it's going to be Christmas Day, and yeah. it was Christmas Day. It's like that all yeah. year. I've been like, fucking hell, hang on, we're both in top six. We're going to be in playoff again. It's going to fucking happen, yeah, yeah. and it's going to be horrible. Yeah. So we Spurs are playing Chelsea in the semi final of the FA Cup, and Arsenal are playing Man City, and. I'm not sure how I would cope with an Arsenal Spurs if that was to happen. It's the least likely. Final. Uh, yeah, final. final. I, I don't. That would oh, too much. Do you remember that, that Gaza semi? That oh. was so mental. That yeah. Game. Yeah. It was, so was, was it the. F- hang on. Semi final. Uh, it was 10. So he'd scored the free kick and then in the same game he then did the mad challenge on. No, no, no it was in the final. Against Gary Charles. Against Gary Charles. Yeah. He, that was a, a mad tackle. But that was a weird one because he, yeah. he was. He, he injured himself. Two, didn't Charles he? should have been more injured. Yeah. But uh, fucking Gascoigne came in at sort of almost like sh- fire height. Yeah. Was crazy tackle on the yeah. edge of the box, which Stuart P scored from. So we've not only lost Gaza yeah. we went 1-0 down yeah. and uh, you know but uh, you know he deserved it it was a terrible yeah. challenge um, Ads quickly a Brentford fan yeah. playoff final or FA Cup final um, like it's even worth him saying yeah. FA Cup what really yeah, you when, gonna, when are we ever going to get to an FA Cup final again mm. but you could get in the Premier League yeah 
But okay, yeah, fair the enough. playoffs is like, you know, it can happen. Brentford and FA Cup final would be. That would be a great day out, wouldn't it? Yeah. And that's one of them where I think you don't mind losing. Like in a way, I mean, you want to win it, but yeah. as a, as Brentford going there and playing Chelsea or Tottenham, you don't expect to win. But if you're actually in the yeah. playoff final, it means you've been at the top of the league all year. You kind of yeah. you've been thinking about promotion a lot, so losing out and seeing them bastards get up. Mm. That like, is it, it's league times by a cup final is the most intense thing. Playoff like finals that. are intense. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. And, and you, you speak to a lot of Premier League fans, and most of them would take the Champions League qualification over an FA Cup, mm. and it's a shame. It's yeah. bloody a ruddy shame as yeah. they say in your part neck of the woods yeah they do why do they what's ruddy mean I don't know alright uh, <laughs> don't know it's not interesting <laughs> Garrett uh, who's another, another regular comment now can I read one and you answer yeah Garrett pod questions with Paulino scoring a hat trick in Uruguay after going off to China and Defoe re- returning from the MLS to perform admirably in the Premier League as a couple of examples mm. do we overstate the negative effect of top players going to lesser leagues good uh, question uh, is he asking that that when a player performs very well after they've left a better league that we overstate the importance of that is that what the question is oh for fuck's sake what am I doing I didn't write it I've just read it do we overstate the negative <laughs> impacts of top players going to lesser league I don't uh... I think what we're saying is do we overstate the negative effects of top players going to lesser leagues and he's given you two examples so his question is the last sort of right I get, I get it so, so the negative impact of playing in a, shit, a league that's shit or worse good question yeah alright um, yeah you do because the player doesn't become a lesser player for playing in a league that isn't as competitive as the Premier League in fact sometimes playing in, in a league like the Premier League with so much pressure and uh, and a need to kind of perform well week in week out with the crowd around you they're giving you jip and whatnot. you can actually damage a player significantly and I think a break of which what Defoe would have got when he went to play for Toronto in the MLS he would have got a break you know he would have been able to enjoy his football somewhat or, or, or think I don't need to I don't need to what sprint, kind of a break put, put, in, in that it's it can, in the competitive nature of the Premier League especially for a striker getting bashed up each week by strong centre backs or having to chase down and, and pressure because if they don't press in the way that their, their team's going to kind of fold apart from the front going back that kind of level of performance is going to wear you out a lot sooner than it would unless you, you played in MLS. I think actually his career has probably been extended somewhat by that, that maybe, year. Yeah, in, yeah, I, think, yeah, I think the question is, yeah, it is overstated. Uh, Paulinho, on the other hand, is, is a bad example because he was a bad, bad, bad footballer. Right. He was one of the worst signing Spurs ever. Right. I mean, he tried. It's just shit. Yeah. Um, I, I just... I... I um... So I don't think we overstate. I think people overstate. It. We don't. Like I don't overstate. It. I, I kind of. I. I still hate the arrogance of that Premier League and that again that whole. Everyone's wrapped up in this being in that top four, like you said, Champions League over yeah. FA Cup, Premier League team over anything to do with English football. It's like mm. I, you know, and it's all oh, the Premier League's best league in the world, and it's like. Is it? You know, maybe it is in terms of as a commercial product, but I, I enjoy watching Spanish football. I've, I've, I've enjoyed watching Spanish football more for the last 10 years than I probably have the mm. Prem. I've fucking always loved watching an old firm game. An old firm game has always meant more to me than any um, mm. English. I, I love a derby. I love it when there's that added element. Needle. I love North London. Uh, I love it when there's even when there's like a, a Newcastle Sunderland, y- you know, the, w- where there's kind of a lot at stake and that local pride. I, I love a derby, but the old firm for me, um, Scottish football as a league isn't anything to write home about. But that game. Always incredible. It's it's fucking mental. Yeah, and I've been to one, and it's just the sounds are just so. Because you know, in England, you tend to get the same kind of songs that do the rounds, and it's um, a bit repeated. Yeah, know, yeah. So like, whereas there, they've got all these old songs, and and probably some of them are sectarian, but both sides are singing. So yeah, well, might say, but it just sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. So if you remove the political aspect to it, the songs. And, and the reasons for them singing it, and and the, and, and the, the the passion that 
that is a result of the, all of the all of that political aspect means that the atmosphere actually at this football ground is is incredible. Yeah. I get there's it's a, such a loaded subject, and I don't want to go into that. Yeah. But you're right, the the, the the creativity in their chance and, and and their passion far outstrips anything else I've seen at any other football yeah. game. Um, it's insane. Yeah. It's just so, uh, well, we play, I mean, look at look at the way that the players talk about like steaming into tackles and stuff like that. Yeah, fucking mad as like go yeah. on YouTube, go, go on YouTube, anyone, and look at like old firm sort of like highlights or whatever, and you get ones from like the days of Gaza and even people like Frank McAvenny yeah. and Chris Woods and 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 there's one where like. Um, fans falling from the crowd and referees get you know it was just he just goes off mm. like fighting in lumps and Craziness. the kickoffs yeah it's incredible yeah. some of the tackles you get in that yeah. we, mad we did it we put together an animation to kind of celebrate oh, yeah. the the fact that the old firm was a, a, a thing about a year ago now. Uh, just go, actually, I'll tell you what we'll, put a, we'll, we'll just drop it in the comments. Put that link in there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, in fact, shit. Somebody made another good point actually a little while ago, and I mentioned Adam on there, and he said, "Can you?" He says, "I don't have time to sit down and watch this in total, and I'd love it if you could um, put down the ch- timestamp the chapters. Not that the, this is that structured." But I said, yeah, Adam can do that because he, he's been a bit lazy. <laughs> I like how all these people t- start throwing out, oh, you should do this, do this, do this. I, we ain't got a lot, enough to do. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good idea. But it man. is a good idea. It's a very yeah. good idea. Um, um, so, uh, <laughs> so, so I don't know if that answers your question, Garrett, but we like Garrett as well. He's a good lad. Yeah, he's a good lad. Even if he's a little... Patrick Dempsey, this is long. I don't think I can read that. Yeah, I'm not reading either. Forget it. The, uh, <laughs> no, no, it, let, me, let me quickly... Um, it's the it's about the disconnect. So there's uh, we are, we got asked two questions. One um, was should we bin off the international uh, breaks during the season, right? And lump it into with this question as well, which was about um, where does that apathy towards international football come from? Do you think? Um, oh, okay. So it's, it's those two things. Can, like, you can't have an international football team and not have them play football. Fo- <laughs> football. Yeah. You can't have eight months where they can't play together no. and then just go into a tournament. So no. what you're asking to bin off international yeah. breaks is to, to remove international football from your country. Now, I've, yeah. I've, got, I've got, not got, not got a problem with that. No. So much. <laughs> I, I, it's a really weird one, isn't it? And um, it's a really weird one. And I don't think there's, again, there's any actually, it's not an easy question. So it's not going to happen. There's too many people that have got a vested interest. Um, and there's a certain amount of games and appearances that the team need to do in order to satisfy the sponsors and justify the checks that they ask them and yeah. the broadcasters to write. Yeah. So, uh, you know, ITV want to have a spot and want to have a national spot on because that's a good way of getting written. So it's going to happen. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying that makes it right. I'm just saying that that's going to continue to happen. But with um, with why? But 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 on then on the flip side, the fans care. Yeah, do they I, care? I, I don't think they do. Do I, you care? No, uh, and I think, and I don't care. No, but does that make us? Uh, do we not care because we're we we hate football? No. Do we do we not care because we we hate our country? No. Maybe it could be that. No, no. <laughs> no. Do, but, you know, so do, do do we hate the players that are playing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes is that what it is? Then? Sometimes. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. It. I think even when it's full of Spurs players. I just sit there and watch it and think, don't get injured, don't get injured, don't get injured. Yeah. Ali, don't go into that tackle. That you went into but, that too hard. And, you- and pr- probably why that's become is because for a long time now, the weight of um, power, the the balance of the structure of the of the game has been weighted towards the um, Premier League yeah. but also to the top of the Premier League yeah. like, let's not make any mistake about it those top six clubs they run things it's a self-perpetuating elite that will might get broken on the odd moment but ultimately 
it's never gonna they stockpile players look at Huddersfield alone in Casey Palmer Izzy Brown from Chelsea they might never play for Chelsea as might a whole host of other amazing players that they Moy as well he's been incredible Moy who's, who's who, yeah who's been a best player in, in, in that I've ever seen play for Huddersfield really? yeah and he's uh, and he probably might never even be good enough to play for City so it's kind of how are them clubs allowed to stockpile all these players and ultimately what, what it uh, and, and sort of so hold the value of them because they farm them out to people like us we play them a little bit that makes the asset more valuable mm. and then if they're really good they get to play for their team if not then they sell them for 10 million or 6 million mm. or something like that to a club so it's a bit like housing I think so it's a bit like rich people having the ability to keep buying lots and lots and lots of different houses mm. and then rent them to people like us who can't afford to buy our own house. So we have to keep paying the rental fees, but we never own the asset. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So you're always a slave to the system. So it, the whole way that this, this game is structured, that's just one example, is it's geared to favour these big clubs. Mm. And when you look at um, where, where it happened, which I think was one of the questions... I kind of remember a period of time under Sven Goran Eriksson's England yeah. where uh, the TV revenues were getting so big for the Premier League that it meant that because the the, uh, the pie is getting so big, it means that the player's slice of the pie is getting so big that the clubs can then sit there going, well, look, hang on a minute, I'm paying him 100 grand a week or 50 grand a week. So, And he's a bit injured right now. I don't want him to play for England. You can play him for half an hour. And it was in Sven Goran Eriksson in England that I remember Fergie and Scholes and he was wanting to keep players back. Yeah. And then they got to a position where, okay, we'll have unlimited substitutions now. So immediately you're playing games where they were playing, it was like a different team one after the next half. Yeah. Now anyone that knows anything about football, it's, it's, it's a 90 minute game. So taking off a different team and switching <coughs> over, it's just like what it becomes a w- worthless exercise mm. because, you know I, what I mean? I've got this idea, it's kind of nebulous. It's not something, I'm not sure I can articulate it properly, but I think... Like I just didn't articulate that properly, that kind of thing. It's like a bit. No, I thought you did all right. Okay, cheers. No worries. Um, <laughs> uh, no, generally, I understood. Um, the, so, the Premier League, our apathetic nature towards international football has become more severe the, the more, the, the bigger the Premier League global brand has become. So, we've been fed by Sky Sports and other, uh, you know, all, all kinds of media agencies and, and everybody perpetuating the idea of, uh, of the Premier League is all that this is what football is now this is what's important and the interest in in, 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 in in the England team has risen as well but the expectation has also risen so we're used to seeing what we get in the Premier League we're used to seeing our players perform we're used to seeing uh, when we're striving two for teams top in the Champions League semi-finals that kind mm. of thing that exactly. kind of era yeah so you kind of have that and that creates of... a false arrogance as well as a false hope about what think... these players will then do when playing together for the England yeah. team I think more than saying? hope I think it's expectation and that's what's damaging yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's that uh, but also the FA haven't done a good job no. in branding the England team in no. In getting the idea of England out to 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 uh, to, to the population, well, they're not, just kind of riding on, on on the Premier League. Yeah, and it almost feels like I feel like we're sold a bit of a myth sometimes. It's like it comes around to competitions, like, hey, guys. Although although we got through a group where all we had to beat was um, you know fucking Liechtenstein and Slovenia to qualify, but we won all fourteen games, mm-hmm. and here we are now in the World Cup, and now we're going to turn on. The, you can go to Sainsbury's you can get a flag and stick it on your car you know all of a sudden it's happening we're going to win the World Cup and you kind of you just look at it and you think we're not going to win it we're not as good as these other teams if you were to because if you think about it Flav if you were to pick a, an, an, an international team right from every single country right yeah. But instead of just being able to pick from the current crop of players, you can go th- back through time. So you could pick Bobby Moore, mm. Jimmy Greaves, whoever you want, right? Yeah. Gaza, Lineker. Yeah. Uh, Brazil could have Pele and, yeah. you know, mm. the original Ronaldo and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, and you were to pick a team of players from all these different con- uh, countries, right? And you yeah. were to put together this all time World Cup. Would England fucking win it? No. Would we get to the semis? 
probably not. Definitely wouldn't get to the no. semis. Are you fucking I mean, kidding fucking me? Amazing, amazing Are you kidding team. me? We'd never get to the semis. What are you, you saying? That there's a deep rooted failure. I'm saying culture? no. I'm saying that we're not. We are England. We do not create as good a players, as good a athletes as other countries mm. in the world. Maybe apathy then is the wrong word because this is clearly passionate. You know, you're pissed off. Well, I'm not pissed off, but... Well, you're coming across as a bit angry. <laughs> Making you feel a little bit... I'm from Yorkshire. Uncomfortable. <laughs> well, like, it's your fault. I'm a child of divorce. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I, I think apathy is the wrong word. I think, actually, people are quite pissed, pissed off at, um, at the fact that England aren't performing. Uh, you know, we, we do... Have, there is untold riches in this country. The FA can generate money, and it does put a lot of money into developing players. It just seems... Oh, and coaches, more to the point. Um... What do you think quickly? No, I just want to say we're not right. I don't think we're as good as as the Brazilian team that would be in that tournament, or the Argentinian team, or the German team, or right. the French team, or the Italian team. And there's probably others as well that would be better than us. Yeah. Right? They would be if you were to look through history and pick a team together. So the differentiator has to be like in anything. It has to be the coach and the strategy. That's the fucking differentiator. It's like in business, you know, like. David can beat Goliath, but he has to have a bit of a fucking plan, you know what I mean? He yeah. has to have something that he can do, because otherwise Goliath would win every single time, but yeah. he doesn't. Leicester City last year, look at Greece in the Euros, or even Portugal in the Euros. The, the team that isn't the best team can win, but they win there by having a team spirit, a team ethic, whereby they're, they're able to be galvanised beyond their capacity. Mm. Um, and we've never had that. They have patsies in charge, Gareth Southgate, fucking Sam Allardyce. Look at these fucking people. Royal None Hudson. of these are going to get us there. They've never done it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Roy Hodgson was out of his depth at fucking Liverpool. And Liverpool were crying out for fucking someone. Yeah. So, so, so we're not going to do it. So, so the thing is, is that the structure of the whole environment around the 11 players going out on the pitch needs to be right. And it's not because what's what's a primary importance is um, the Premier League and the Champions League so it's when the Premier League became so important that they were getting so much cash that the clubs had a say to say hang on a minute fuck you England mm. I'm paying them 100 grand a week mm. but then it's also the Champions League when they started to go to this Champions League format where four teams are fucking in it and they're all playing not just one game and going out or two games and going out but they've got these group games where they're, they're, they might half the time the best two teams are qualified but they're going and playing Grasshopper Zurich for a fucking Wednesday night game away and then they're playing playing SK Bran at home and the fucking these teams are never going to go anywhere so the tournament of the championship what they've done is they've tried to make that more premium by creating a format and a tournament structure that allows them to sell it for a fortune to the likes of BT Sport in England and other you know broadcasters around the world to create more fucking fit. there's loads of Champions League games there doesn't need to be them still the same teams at the fucking end but they're so they're what they're doing is they're diluting the opportunity for England to get together they're diluting the chances of England to actually be a good team because ultimately we're putting all this money spinning shit uh, higher up the priority yeah. as a country that is yeah so that's what it is I've yeah. done it for, you look tired and upset now I've fucking gone on a bit too much are you alright? I just feel like England are never going to be good they're never going to be good I think you've, you've really run that they're never going to be good there's something fundamental needs to change in the way this game is structured. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like the conversation that the foe should go to the World Cup in two years. What is that about, Ad? Why shouldn't he? Because he's 34. If, if he's the best, <laughs> best striker in the country at that moment in time, OK, apart from Harry Kane, he was obviously also going to go, why shouldn't he go? If well, he, he is, go. he's not going to be though. You have to be logistically yeah, he sound is? here. You've got to plan ahead so and think. When you're at the World Cup, you got. To... Years... <laughs> That's a good point, well made. What? Two years away from World Cup, yeah, you plan ahead, but not when you're choosing your squad for the World Cup. Yeah, but you, what I'm saying is the foe in form now, or the foe, you're, you're banking, all right, you make a good point, right? But what I'm saying is that ultimately the chances of the foe being in form in 18 months' time. Is less likely than than developing. Yeah, if but why do you? Why do you? Why, why do you decide? Need to decide now? Because I'm, I'm saying there's no point in even being in the team now. 
There's no point because what we should be doing is developing a tactic and a squad that can deliver a tactic that can go and win us the World Cup. And just so, p- just playing a form striker now and so it is, is not helpful. There's no way Jermaine Defoe can be in the same sort of form that is this year, this time next year. I'm saying the chances of it are not likely, so it's not Why? worth taking that risk. Why? I'm saying we, it's so about risk. Now, I, you don't know how much it would decline by the time he's 35. Yeah, it's, it's, still going it's 18 point. months though. It's not just an, a, a single year. Yeah. I just don't know how. Like Gareth Southgate, my prevailing memory of him as a footballer, um, and certainly as an in, in, England footballer, yeah. is taking perhaps the most feeble penalty I've ever seen uh, in in perhaps the biggest game of of, of my England he life. Was, he was a good defender. What? He, it, it, you just, just I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's like, why are you making this guy the fucking... Like, if you come into the changing room, you're it's like, right, we need to play for this guy. That guy? Do you know what I mean? The guy that fucked that penalty against Germany? Like, no. Yeah, he's feeble on the inside. At least Pierce went and then atoned for the miss yeah, but by banging him. Pierce one. was... Like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have Pierce as the manager. I wouldn't have any of them as the manager. Who would you just... Quickly, well, uh, just anyone in the world, who would you take... <laughs> Right, I don't think I've got the, uh, the the knowledge to actually sit here and really say it. And to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of people do. Mm. When they sit and spout out names, it's like, it's like when they say, oh, so-and-so should be in the team. It's like, you fucking... It's chemical. But you also... No, no, but anything to do with leadership, to do with business, that is chemical. It's about what happens between a bunch of people. So until I'd sat down, I can sit here now and go, Mourinho. Or I can sit here and go, fucking, I don't know... Steve McLaren what you know it's like name a guy mm. who and look at his CV but I'd like to chat to the fucking guy and find out what and why and what his fucking techniques are because the game the, the modern player is a type of character that's got a certain ecosystem you need to find a way of penetrating yeah. that to speak to that guy that's why the Sam Allardyce thing and the Roy Hodgson was ridiculous yeah <coughs> And fucking trying to relate to Raheem Sterling and taking the piss. <laughs> Sam Do you know what I'm saying? Come here, Raheem. Yeah, come here. I'll tell you what. Like, stop having kids. Yeah, it's just no, like... it didn't. Yeah, there's one. That's a myth. So it's, yeah. in, it's impossible to say that you need to you need to speak to the people. Fair enough. But you know, as football <laughs> fans, our prerogative to have a rant every now and then. Of course. Yeah, that's right. allowed. Yeah. Um, HB. He says, "Great podcast again." Thanks. <laughs> Good. Uh, what's the chart? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's the chant that you best secretly like from another team? As a Liverpool fan, mine is Spurs are on their way to Wembley. Busy, busy, oh, oh, yeah. it's it's that one. I didn't hear it at Brentford, I was disappointed. Yeah. No, did, you, did you hear bzzz? No, I was Nothing hoping, like but I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, What's yours? Fits all, fits all, fits all. It's nothing like Joseph Fritz all. Because one's an offender and one's a defender. Nothing like Joseph Ritz all it's it's edgy. Good, it's a good one. It is. Um, I quite like that. It's funny. I mean, not Joseph Fritz all's not funny. I don't know. Right. I mean, okay. Um, th- there's a there's a whole. Bo- I, I used to love the the song that used to get sung when Robbie Fowler was a bit more relevant. Yeah. And they, and he was known for having a lot of houses. Yeah. And they'd sing, "We all live in a Robbie Fowler house, <laughs> a Robbie Fowler house." <laughs> To, yeah. to the tune of Yellow Submarine I liked that yeah but well, I, I quite like the anthems as well when teams have got proper anthems Fields of Anfield Road yeah, that's, Liverpool that's really good that sounds good yeah it does sound amazing um, I the, the thing is the top, I can't really comment because all of our chants all of them are nicked mm. like we are the worst to nick in chants I liked it when you kind of you were the ones though that remodelled I went to Spurs I went to yeah. Saints yeah. I remember that used to sound amazing on the telly because you just keep it going for ages, it'd speed up and slow down. I, yeah. I, I like that one. That was great. In 2008, yeah. that was when it was at best. If, you want, if anyone wants to know what that actually used to sound like, because Spurs sing it too fast now, now. But in 2008, Spurs played Arsenal and we beat them 5 1 in the League Cup semi final. Right. And just before Dawson scores, you can hear it. Uh, it's just the whole crowd of places echo in with it. Incredible. I was mm. there. It was, honestly, right now, I've got. Yeah, yeah, in the back yeah. and, and Jermaine Jean has crossed this ball in and it was oh when the Spurs and it just went on for <laughs> ages and this ball come in and I think Dawson scored or it was known goal by Bentner I can't remember and it flies in the whole place like fuck yeah yeah they're great they're fuck like, they're oh, God, I can't describe to anybody what that feels like I like um, so I, I'll, I'll be kind here and bad at the same time mm. so uh, Leeds have got quite a good one where they do like uh, 
it's leads her away yeah and, like, and they do that in the concourse and half time like but we do one that's like the same tune right mm. so when we beat leads mm. when we beat leads again um, when we beat leads twice this season open camera, twice this twice season, this season beat uh, home and away yeah. uh, fuck I'm fucking what am I doing I'm tempting the football gods <laughs> to punish me you think ah! you're not doing I it I fell Matt, for it keep I doing fell it. for it you, have, you come in sometimes <laughs> do you remember when uh, you, you were playing uh, see you do do it you're deserving I do. You, yeah. so Adam's sitting in the office minding his own business literally minding his own business he even had his earphones in right no one was a, and you'd be standing up just looking at him behind him <laughs> and then Adam to, to his credit just going, we're going to smash you <laughs> 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 the, uh, the, so, so, so uh, Michael Heffaly uh, uh, scored against Leeds uh, about two minutes to go. Do you remember when there was a kickoff? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, uh, Wagner Monk. and Monk, and um, and anyway, and they interviewed on the pitch. I think it was on Sky the game, and they interviewed him on the pitch. And because he's German, he don't really know like obviously a different language. Yeah, and what's up? Probably not. Uh, he said, "Oh, so how did you feel? You know, scoring the winner against Leeds live on the table? Went, oh, it's a fucking dream." Yeah, like, oh, right, that's what the German guy said. Oh, is so that then, where the songs come yeah, from? That's so then we all sing now. It's a fucking dream. That's so good. It's a fucking dream. That's so good. It's a fucking dream. I, did, I fucking thought that was just something you said. It's a fucking dream. Yeah, that's where it's from. It's that's great. Dream, yeah, I know. From a, that when when there's a crossover from players into football in, into fans, yeah. that that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um. There. Yeah. There, there's loads. I mean, there's the, one of the great things about British football is is the. Uh, inventiveness mm. that's a word of, I, used to, I used to like uh, I like it when Birmingham used to sing shit on the villa I yeah. always quite like that shit on the villa yeah, that was a good one and then, and then um, Hibs um, oh, their anthem Sunshine and Leaf yeah that is, a, that is a banger because of the, the proclaimers yeah. which is a kind of uh, yeah. you know it yeah. if I could what yeah. I well no it's not that one actually band yeah, yeah. yeah that's, 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 that, that is a sorry right. just in case anyone knows plus the fuck this yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're Hibs fans and, and the, the, they attached they attached that you know they took it and, and, and made it their own it was amazing um, same can't be said for Crystal Palace who's seen Gladder over Dave Clark 5 Spurs fans oh really yeah um, David so do you want to ask this one uh, what's the most heartbreaking experience you've ever ever had watching football and that's from Dambrose double O the most heartbreaking experience anything that's been to mind Dad? sorry what was it uh, it's looking at his phone or something oh, yeah. looking at porn um, it. most heartbreaking Heart- experience yeah what in football no in rugby yeah football <laughs> <laughs> um, <right. Well, laughs> yeah sorry to disturb right, you right. Right. <laughs> looking <laughs> motocross I have a think about um, it I've got one Go on. we're playing Doncaster Rovers Last game of the season, we're second, they're third on the same points. Oh, penalty! Brentford get a penalty in the last minute. Oh, if yeah. we score, we get automatic promotion. But this was a swing. Um, <laughs> so we've got a player on loan from Fulham who grabs the ball. They're yeah. arguing and he's going to take it. He chooses to take it. Never good. Smashes it against the bar. Oh. Doncaster get the ball. Oh. Literally walk out the other end and just tap it in. Mate, I'm insane. So they go up. We don't. We lost in the playoffs. Yeah, I that felt is, much lower than that. That's tough. Did you cry? <laughs> no, I didn't cry. It's the fine though. Have you never men, cried? Men cry I've cried at the football. Yeah. At football? Um, not for a while. What, when you was like eight or something? Yeah, yeah. It's tough. One. You want anything? Yeah, there was, there's there's a, a few that stick out. I remember when uh, when Huddersfield got to the, we were, I think we finished maybe third in the league or fourth or however many had gone off. We played fucking Peterborough, a nemesis of ours. I hate Peterborough, mm. and we we drew at their place in the first leg and came back to our place and because we were at home in the second leg and because we finished about I don't know what. I'm just going to say 20 yeah. points ahead of them because they'd just snuck into the playoffs and we top. Kind of thought we were going to do and we, we lost. Uh, this guy called Tony Adcock scored the winner and we went out and, and I remember I remember that upset me yeah. I was only young but um, England losing to Germany um, not the yes the Southgate penalty miss one was bad but it was the um, money yeah that the one with the um, no 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 Chris sorry Waddle. the um, yeah what was the Guess the Chris Waddle and was it David Pierce missed 
Pearson. Yeah, yeah. When did David Batty was he then with Oh no no David Batty that would have been ninety eight. I'm getting things confused. Yeah, you're right. But it's it's cool because I understand because they're all they're all the same result. Right. And they did all merge. But the ninety eight uh, England versus Argentina, David Batty missed. Right. It was uh, one where Lineker had scored and it was one all maybe and then it was that, right, like, that, that was that, the ninety ninety. That upset me. Yeah. yeah. That really upset me. Yeah. But I think the most upset I was 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 when um Heisel I remember watching wow. Heysel Stadium on the telly um, where it was Liverpool Juventus and I, I just didn't um, I don't know how old I must have been like maybe fucking what, what year was Heysel was that oh, I don't like know. 1986 or something like that it was in the 80s yeah I, I, I remember watching that as a kid and fucking um, horrendous yeah. and you know because in them days right there weren't you didn't see all these foreign teams on the TV you didn't have you know um Serie A on the TV or something like that you'd only really see these foreign players at tournaments and you heard and you knew of names like Boniek or Platini but you didn't see them and because and they were this foreign thing and like I was a kid you, you I totally wanted Liverpool to win and so you're really excited to watch this football match and then that unfolding and um, I, you just didn't understand it do you know what I mean and, yeah. and that was really um I think that was the most upset I've been. Mine, mine. See, I was going to go the exact same sort of way because I was thinking about all of, all of, the times that Spurs of Arsenal have hurt us and and, and beaten us hmm. uh, over the last twenty six years. Um, but then it just popped into my head that I was at, I was at White Hart Lane when Moamba collapsed. Oh wow! Yeah, and that was the weirdest feeling yeah, I've ever been. It's it was bizarre. It was it was. I, it, it was deeply upsetting because yeah. I literally thought that I'd watched someone die in front of my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was quiet. And it was 35, 36,000 people just deadly silent. Yeah. Just looking and, and hoping that um, yeah. that he, he uh, you know, you watch a fan run on the pitch who happened to be a heart surgeon. Yeah. He knew what would happen straight away. Right. So that that was the upset but on a human level. That that was the most upset. Mm. But on, on a footballing level, I think Joe mines England as well, mm. which is a bit bizarre. Mm. It's the 98 World Cup. 98 one. Yeah. Is that the one? When, on our talking about 90, was yeah, it? Yeah. When we played, uh, we played um, Argentina. It was Owen's breakthrough year. Siege came into the team and right. Beckham lashed out and got sent a Simeone oh, sent God, off yeah, 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 yeah. I that even was think fucking, that was just I even think Sol Campbell <sighs> scored a disallowed goal that's right yeah, yeah. Which and it seemed have, fine didn't it shouldn't it have been legit. disallowed there was just so much about it and from I thought, a corner wasn't it yeah. yeah I think that was a different was it a different game am I getting mixed Sol up Sol Campbell got a goal disallowed against Portugal as well you're was it a head up? Yeah. Alright, I'm, I'm getting mixed up. No, maybe, I think he might have actually. Done it in both. Yeah, yeah, maybe in both or something like that. We're having a nightmare here, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we've done a lot of research for this show today. Um, um, we don't uh, have yeah, any facts. But I just remember. <laughs> we just have strong opinions. Facts are interesting. Yeah. I mean, they're useful, but not always interesting. Yeah. Nah. Anyway, uh, we kind of answered that question, mm. um, but let's move on because we'll be here all day. Uh, Charlie Brown, uh, uh, Zav1918. That's his Twitter if you want to go follow him. <laughs> Does anyone do that? Jim? That's a good question. I'm going to follow that guy. <laughs> if, if Man United finish outside the top four, is it rank failure for Jose considering he bought in Pogba to that Mkhitaryan Bay and uh, to the existing squad? They spent a lot of dough, a lot of money. Of course, one hundred percent. It is an unmitigated failure if Jose Mourinho doesn't finish in the top four. If he doesn't win the league, it's a failure. You know, you don't spend that amount of money and and just get away with finishing fifth or sixth. No, Did in you my know, opinion. Do you know? Um, I remember when they who was in charge um, after. I think was it Moy? Who was in Moyes. charge when they got Falcao? And then, uh, we're doing Van Gaal, and, I think. and Di, Di Maria. Who was in charge then? Van Gaal. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Van Gaal. So I, I remember... I remember we Stop would, asking difficult questions. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we were doing a live deadline day show. Right. And actually, I, I remember going on it for the last hour. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about acts. Obviously, there'd been, you know, the whole Falcao's coming in on a plane. It was all very exciting. Yeah. And the sign Di Maria. And I remember saying at that point in time that um, I felt that United had actually... Um, people are talking about them being back now but because they've just kind of changed their whole policy and they've started paying top whack for all these guys and they've got people that are end of their careers on these big contracts that felt that there was a that United were actually fucked for a little while 
Um, and it's turned out to be right. And I just when you said that, I remember, because I was thinking, well, it's not, you know, Mourinho's inherited a team. It takes a while to get your team together. And, yeah. But they, they, they went from, in that Fergie era, to go to actually buying players kind of really on the up and then selling them at their peak and kind of moving on, I think that's fair to say, to buying people kind of at their peak cash and probably selling them on for less I'm guessing do you know what I mean yeah so it's it's difficult to pin it on Mourinho I think that they've been fucked for a while but should they be doing better of course they should maybe but Flav as we we do say sometimes it's like look fucking Chelsea United Arsenal Liverpool Mm. Tottenham Man U yeah. Everton Man City. U and City yeah. Everton aren't in, in that conversation I'm afraid I do love Everton But they're not in that yeah, But know. Though there's six teams there They can't all get into the top four And they're all fucking top teams Top You know Big clubs yeah. And they can't all win the league So I think that there's this I don't know why All the fans fall for this Kind of Sensationalist Ban- yeah, whether it's banter or whether it's serious kind of journalism yeah. that actually makes people feel like it's failure if you don't win that's because true. you can't all win that's a good point the, to, to be fair that is a good point and what I was about to say what I did say is that it is an unmitigated failure but I believe a probably a different manager would have got a better result and Jose should be removed from his position Chelsea were 10th last year Conte's they've smashed the league Mm. You know, and I, I you know, I, I, I've said it before. Mourinho has done brilliantly. I just think he's there are managers that are as good as him now. He should have done a lot. You I, know, I think he's he, okay. So he's he just returned. He's he hasn't returned. His star, the Mourinho star, has definitely um, it's been tarnished or fallen or whatever they say. Yeah. Uh, but to pick up your example of Chelsea, mm. I actually feel that Chelsea were. Had a lot of the pieces and actually just kind of had a bit of a bad year. It felt like Mourinho, the physio, the something went wrong there. Yeah, that, so that had a negative impact. So that was a false position mm. for Chelsea. Yeah, I get you. So I think that it was an easy job to go in and, and get them back up. Yeah, because there was a lot that was right about that team. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, totally. Um, whereas. Man United, like I said, fucking four years ago, three years ago, yeah. whenever all that was going on, like, like this ain't right. This is gonna catch up with them because they're spending a lot of cash. They was they started to spend crazy money, and it was all predicated on them getting back into the Champions League. And mm. there's penalties apparently in the Adidas deal on on um, on the shirt sponsorship about where they finish. Yeah. So all of a sudden, for a club like that to be missing the Champions League revenues and then the bonuses from various sponsors and stuff like that yeah. they were trying to catch up and if they don't get it then they're still paying all these salaries and stuff like that and I mm. feel they've been they've been. it's almost like a, a gambler yeah. that's kind of trying to catch up his winnings by keep spending keep spending yeah. they're talking now about getting Griezmann and beating the transfer and trying to get a Neymar and it's like fine you can keep putting the money in but you know that's not what that great United team was actually built on yeah I think it's a, uh, a warning to Arsenal as well you know I know a lot of Arsenal yes. fans uh, on Arsenal Fan TV they're, they're, they're aware of this idea about careful what you wish for mm. and I know actually to be fair the best point I've ever heard on, on Arsenal Fan TV is that it isn't about us becoming more successful it's about the, the a change in the regime that's seen us not develop at all and some of them, I don't know how real they, they, they really they believe this. It, it, they said, you know, we would take four and out of the top four if it showed that something had changed. So, um, which is we hang on a minute. That can't. So, see so what you're saying is we would fall out of the top four just to show that something's changed, even though they might never get back into they, the top they, four. No, they're obviously hoping that they they win the league. They find the right appointment, but they understand that it's a, a risk mm-hmm. and that it's like risk reward. But what they can't accept is this just. Can, Existentially, it, null, you know, destroying yeah. of just purely it, just it existing. It feels to now that, that actually it's got so ridiculous that something needs to give. It's just like if I was Wenger, I'd almost be like, "Look, man, like, why would you want to be there if if the the crowd was so like I, I, as a person? If if 
I don't want to be somewhere I'm not welcome. You know what I mean? I would rather not. If I'm not welcome, then fine, I won't come. But so I don't know why you'd be sitting there enjoying that. Anymore. I think in his head, I think in his head, he genuinely doesn't believe that that's the case. And I think it's in that, denial. Well, I, I, it may not be the case, Matt. Right? Because you, you think of the power of Arsenal fan TV and the reach they have. It creates a false idea of perhaps how lots of Arsenal fans feel. It may be right, but the vast majority don't really get involved in protest. They don't even get involved in speaking their mind. So they just go about their day watching football. Uh, yeah, and, but, uh, would you, do you think, okay, okay, so, so fine. I, I yeah. accept that. Yeah, yeah, I accept yeah. that. However, if I'm looking, at, um, I'm looking at Wenger's period of time. So I think, yeah, kind of a good manager, you know. However, inherited probably the best back four or five that's ever been. Yeah. Right? Uh, inherited a team that had, I think, Burkamp and Ian Wright. And it, they were fucking awesome. It definitely had Burkamp. I think he signed yeah. Donnery. And oh, no, sorry, you said Ian Wright. Yeah, he, he had Ian Wright. Yeah. Um, so he then built on that, and they were a fucking amazing team, but mm. they were, the spine was always You already strong. had it there. And I just don't understand how, whenever I've been watching Arsenal and looking, I've been thinking, right, they need a proper fucking striker and they need a fucking proper centre-half, you know, like a tough guy, like an alpha male, mm. rather than these players that find they might look like footballers, but they don't look like they're fucking... Namby Pambies is what my granddad would have said. Yeah, the, you know, and I think that they missed out on that spine. And I, I can never understand why that failure to, to correct that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I, if I was to look at it, regardless of, because I don't care about, uh, you know, I'm just judging it on, on what I think. And from a distance, like, so there's Latin signing that Man United made. I was saying uh, the year before, they need to get a top class striker because they're in these games. But they need someone that intimidates, someone that in the last 10 minutes of a tight game against Chelsea, whereas Chelsea always had a drogba, and so that when the ball's in the box, you can see the defence shitting themselves. Mm. You need to have someone of that level that's a proper, not a makeshift guy or fucking Giroud or yeah. someone like that, a proper striker, someone that intimidates and you all they need is that little chance. Mm. And they never went out and got these things. Really so I'd be looking and thinking... I, that's what I don't understand especially when you think about the Invincibles team if I were asked I'd be looking hang on when it was working what did that look like and you think fucking I'd Petit and Vieira and of were, course they have they, they were hard as fuck in the midfield have, he's definitely looked back and tried to figure it out so why does he have at times and uh, I don't mean now but at times he's got in there like fucking uh, Jack Wilshire mm. Ramsey uh, Cazola mm. all these fucking small slight Technical players, players yeah. that it's because it was like the thing for a while it's like yeah well they're not going to get a win against Stoke because they can't deal with that physical thing even away from Barcelona home. have have that player who breaks up play yeah and Busquets um, a Mascarano and, and, and Poyol or whatever but hard yeah. people that he has can, failed in that respect definitely and that's, I what think I, I, that's what I don't understand I think a lot of where this resentment from Arsenal fans comes from actually is if you look as just forget football but just on a human level stasis is never a, a positive thing it's never something that people look for I, don't, I want everything to be the same forever I think a lot of people think like that you think I they think, want that oh, well I think a lot of people that live their lives wanting things to continue but a lot of people don't like change I would say in general I know we're talking about the arsenal thing not, not change so much but just improvement they, they want to improve their lives they want they want experience they want to earn more they want to be able to buy a better car than they could five years ago depends where they're at Really, yeah. I know there's. I forget that. Point. Yeah, yeah. But, right, <laughs> but there's an interesting thing about getting to forty grand in earning, right? I right. heard on the Joe Rogan podcast. You get to forty thousand pound, and the money you earn after forty thousand pound doesn't actually add to your happiness. Yeah. It enables you to buy expensive things, but you can right. still buy it semi decent yeah. things. It might be up to fifty grand now, whatever right. it is. This was a few years ago. Yeah, but it was just an interesting social study on on how happy people are. Okay. It, no, people think I, earn, I need to earn 200 grand so I can do the, the X, Y, and Z, but you actually yeah. know how happy you are when you're earning 40 or 50 grand. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It is. There's, there's a lot of people that are rich that are unhappy. Mm. You know, they, they, they just are. Yeah. And so it's, it, it's a fallacy, yeah. isn't it? The money makes that. But that's a lot. And that's another podcast. Adam ain't rich, and he's one of the happiest people I've ever met. Yeah. yeah. Look at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is All right. That, it? that is it. Thank you so much, Matt. 
No, thank you, Flav. Yes. And uh, thanks everyone who <laughs> and Adam. said and Adam always thank you. He knows how and grateful I am. To thanks you. everyone for interacting with us. We, we do love and uh, read all your comments. And the best part about this podcast is interacting with people. Yeah. The best part of the, the best part of all the all the best conversations come out of people sending questions mm. in and asking us to discuss stuff. And it's actually a lovely thing that people want to hear us talk about that stuff. Isn't that don't you think definitely? That is people really- care. Like I get it. I get. I've got someone asking me on Twitter the other day about the Raiders moving. To Las Vegas and what I think about that, and uh, yeah, the Raiders are moving to Las Vegas. Um, uh, you, as, as a fan from overseas, it doesn't affect you too much, or are you, are you interested in the traditions of that? I'm interested in the traditions. I'm also interested because Ty's mum, sorry, uh, Ty's mum's sister lives in Oakland and goes to the games, and I was looking forward to going. Uh, when's um, it, when when is it going to happen? A uh, couple of years, so I still have time to get out. Yeah, there. but um, and yeah. you're going to go to Las Vegas again, you know, because yeah. you're that kind of guy. Well, you've got the to be able to roll <laughs> I don't know I know, I know. <laughs> so bro I'm just making a joke it's all nappy money now alright so Matt see you at the far post see you at the far post